The Global Nutrition Report places Nigeria among countries displaying some measure of commitment to reduce hunger and improve children's and women's nutrition. In reality, it is one of the five large low-middle-income countries where more than half of the children under the age of five are either stunted or wasted, resulting from severe acute malnutrition. Ready to use therapeutic foods to address the situation in hospitals is one of the essentials. Sometimes there is no budget line for this, and where there is, it may not be released, and where released, in a few cases, may not be cash backed. In this dawn of the new era, this program is appealing to politicians and policymakers to make commitment to factor in the needs of these children so that inclusion on the list is not just a token uh, presence. Severe acute malnutrition in our precious children, our future, is therefore the focus of this episode of Bridges. Welcome. This is Bridges, working for a sustainable society. I'm Mojima Konjola. Uh, my guest today are Dr. Chidi Charles. He's a pediatrician from the National Hospital here in Abuja. Doctor, you're welcome, and he's on my extreme right. And um, we have Dr. Emmanuel Sopo, who works with the Network for Health Equity and Development, NHED. You are also welcome on Bridges, sir. Thank you. And then a woman, we call her Mama Food, in terms of the fact that her commitment and passion to ensure that, I mean, our children, particularly those who unfortunately are severely malnourished, get at least what they need within the uh, confines of what government can do. We have here with us uh, Mrs. Thomas, you're welcome, a nutritionist from the Federal Ministry of Health. Thank you. Right. We do have a case at hand, and we're hoping that we can build some measure of bridge, you know, a stable and sustainable bridge, to ensure that our children, particularly between the ages of zero to five, don't come down with severe malnutrition. So that's the focus today. First, let's start from uh, the pediatrician himself. Is, is, is it a serious issue um, yes. that we need to build a bridge? Yes, it's uh, important to build a bridge because when we look at the topic we are discussing right now, we are looking at malnutrition and the severe form, which is SAM. Now, the, the first is understanding what it is and the impact. That, that would make us understand the need for us to build the bridge in managing malnutrition. Malnutrition, in its simplest way of um, defining it, is that it is when the food we take in for nutrients and energy is taken either in the proportion that is not enough or is in the form that is more than what we need for the body, you know, to meet up our requirement. Now, in our setting, we have the two of them coexisting, but oftentimes the proportion, the burden of the undernutrition is quite alarming and overwhelming. So a lot of emphasis are kind of paid to the um, undernutrition. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean to say that the overnutrition doesn't have its own. It does exist impact. as well. It do, does mm -hmm. exist. So some is, you know, when we look at the undernutrition, we have moderate um, nutrition, uh, uh, moderate um, acute malnutrition, mm -hmm. and the severe acute malnutrition. You know, these have impact on our children. We find that our children will not grow when they are malnourished. Their development, you know, in terms of their brain, their level of cognition the ability to maximize, to live up to their full potential is lost, mm -hmm. you know, because of the impact of malnutrition to the developing child's brain. Then the effect on their immunity as well. Children that are malnourished are very vulnerable, are vulnerable to all forms of infection. Mm -hmm. And we know that the contribution of malnutrition to death is like half, almost all under five that die, half of them, you know, are attributed to being malnourished. Mm. So this is to tell you the impact it has directly on the under five. Okay. Well, we're, we're, we're looking now, at least we all agree here with me, just give me by a nod, that we do have a serious public health issue with severe malnutrition in children. Now, um, I would quickly go to uh, Dr. Soko. Do you see so many children coming down with malnutrition, severe malnutrition? It's a serious, severe malnutrition, acute malnutrition, a serious problem. About 2.5 million children in Nigeria have severe, suffer from severe acute malnutrition yearly. 
And out of that, only a quarter, that's about 600,000, have access to services. And uh, out of that quarter, um, probably less than 500 get properly treated. And the problem of not being treated is because of the lack of uh, access to readily uh, uh, utilize uh, food uh, nutrients that mm -hmm. we, uh, we provide as uh, services. Mm -hmm. One of the key things is the limited commitment in terms of budget allocation and release, as you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. on, on these issues. Mm -hmm. So w when, we, w when we look at um, the, uh, the availability of uh, what we now call ready-to-use food nutrients for children, uh, let's leave it so that uh, our, our viewers would understand what we are speaking to. Um, do, does this fall uh, on, on the shoulders of government totally? And where are we, uh, Mama Nutrition? <laughs> Thank you. Because malnutrition is an issue that involves multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary approach, it's not only for government all of us are involved mm. and that is why is there is a lot of partnership with the both public private aspects to mm. take care of it in the business setting and this is why the nation has also put in the policy that takes that takes care of multi-sectoral approach mm. and where we are in the country with availability of ready to use therapeutic food is because nigeria has taken the bull by the horn to include all the six nutrition commodities in the essential medicine list in which ready to use therapeutic food is inclusive including the Formula 75 and Formula 100 that takes care of taking care of the complicated one in the secondary or tertiary facility. It is very, it is very heartwarming to know that um, it is now listed on the uh, essential medicines uh, list. But well, let's speak to availability. Why is it that at some point, the, the, you know, we, we have seen, and as um, um, Dr. Emmanuel Sopo will agree with me, sharing with us experiences that sometimes that are stuck out yeah. for children. It, what, what, what is responsible for this? Stuck out for things that are essential for our children? One of the key reasons for the stuck out is because of limited, one, awareness. The policy makers and most of the people are not aware of the burden of this disease and its impact on the children. Mm. As uh, my colleague had mentioned, uh, Thomas had mentioned earlier on, nine times children with severe malnutrition have nine times the chance of dying from complications than ordinary children so you see it shows the effect of that on children but people many people are not aware of the burden they're not aware of the magnitude it have it has on children mm -hmm. and so the issue of prioritizing and ensuring that is included in the budget in sufficient amount and then funds released as at when necessary is not there so it's important to so ensure delay first. in release Giving it priority on the budget list is uh, yeah. uh, one of the one of the bridges that we must quickly build, you know, to ensure that our children get this. Uh, for those who are Se severely uh, acute, malnourished, malnourished children. Yeah. Now, doctor, um, well, you are the national hospital, and that's it's in the it's in the capital of Nigeria. Do you see children coming down with some? Yes, we see some, you know, and usually they come with infections like maybe pneumonia some of them may even have chronic infections like tb mm -hmm. some may have other things which may have predisposed them to having because if you look at the etiology of malnutrition first of all there is either the child is on the if you look at the immediate causes either lack of food lack of food could come either from food insecurity mm -hmm. when the person doesn't even have access to the food in the first place the other could be that the food is there but the practice of of you know feeding practices right. is 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 not right so that child will come down with malnutrition. Then the other important cause now is diseases. We have these diseases in the environment, diseases that impact on nutrition mm. like HIV, malaria, okay. and all of them will now cause malnutrition and they now present in the hospital. I, I'm going to be reading copiously from uh, the National Nutrition and Health Survey, uh, which was held uh, just last year yeah. and yeah. takes us home. And um, one is worried. He said, uh, from, I'm reading here now from page 41, and it says, stunting an indicator of chronic malnutrition refers to linear growth retardation and cumulative growth deficits in children. Very alarming. And we have this. You go to the field. Yes. What, what is it that we should do that we are not doing as a people, as a nation, as a state, as politicians, as legislators, that we need to key into this now? Very good. You see, malnutrition issue, we should start from the preventive aspects. If we can do with the aspects of 
optimal infant and young child feeding practices right from the time the mother is in the womb of the woman. It will take care of the children that are stunted, even from the womb, which affects. And another thing is that we are talking of budget issue in all sectors. Most of the time, nutrition budget line is not even there. Most states don't even, and even some that have it, it's not even robust enough to take care, and even not released, even at the right time. This is one of the things. And another thing is that, the way we are uh, taking care of malnutrition issues in the country, this severe acute malnutrition, is that mainly donors and the uh, international are supporting us more in the northern region. That is why in the northern, northeast and uh, 14 states in the northeast and the northwest zone have 2,161 community management acute malnutrition sites that are now operating, including 642 sites in the uh, humanitarian burden states. Hmm. And this is where I bet in the southern region, where we don't have another north central nursing, that is why the, the doctor in the national health said that yes, it's not being treated. ACT is here to establish such. And this is why now the federal government has put in uh, that since now we have the essential medicine list, uh, listing these nutrition commodities, there is need to establish in other zones. What, what are you yeah. seeing in the so states? This is the uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah, in, in the states, yeah. the northwest and northeast zones have the highest burden in terms of uh, severe acute malnutrition, mm -hmm. followed by the North Central. It's not that it's not in the other parts of the country, mm -hmm. but in terms of the burden, that's where it is. But then in terms of availability of even human resources that are capable to actually manage yeah. these uh, children, you know, is very limited. Mm -hmm. The number of sites, even though uh, my yes. colleague has mentioned about 2,000, they require yes. much more because the disease burden is very high. Mm -hmm. They do also require investment in terms of uh, raising awareness as in terms of prevention right from the mothers and all that. But mm -hmm. then one issue is one big elephant in the, in the room is the issue of poverty, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you can't give what you don't have. If there is no money, if you don't have money, if you don't have the resources, then you may be not, not be able to provide mm -hmm. the food. Mm -hmm. So addressing food security as a whole is a core issue, even though in terms of short and intermediate term measures, you know, mm -hmm. addressing... Uh, the ways of providing, I mean, ready to use therapeutic foods, getting them, importing them, and looking at internal ways of actually manufacturing yes, them. Yes, yes, uh, looking key. in country. Yeah. That is when we'll be talking about sustainability, and that time we'll have a firm, sustainable bridge yeah. that will ensure that our children grow to their food potentials. Another thing I'd just like to bring here is that, the, according to this book, you say the, the situation shows the same picture with regards to the nutrition status of women. So if mothers are not properly fed, yes. there's the possibility that uh, they would also produce severe, acute, malnutrition mm -hmm. children, right. which is sad, which we don't need. Mm -hmm. Again, I'd like you to re-echo uh, why we need to take nutrition in children very seriously. Uh, yes, you know, like I mentioned earlier, when we look at the impact of malnutrition, it affects the child, the community, as well as even the nation. So looking at the child, we've mentioned the effect on the cognition, on the growth, on the development, and even increasing the likelihood of the child dying before the fifth birthday. So we've mentioned that about more than half of the children that die before their fifth birthday are attributable to malnutrition. So you see the effect malnutrition has. Then the mother, their nutritional needs increases with pregnancy or during that period, you know. Lactation. They find out that the, 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 the requirement almost doubles. So you, the woman is at risk of having anemia from micronutrient deficiency, is at risk of even having pro prolonged labor, stillbirth, and even losing the child shortly after. Okay, uh, the yes, I'd, I'd like to bring us back to the children. Yes. And, um, now, yeah, yes. now, on the nation, now the impact on the nation, a lot of our resources are wasted, you know, t catering for all the impact of malnutrition. Like she said earlier on, the, the, the hinge on managing malnutrition is mainly on preventing it. There's a lot I've been mentioned about the ready-to-use therapy, mm -hmm. which is very good. For us, we're excited to see that it has been included in the essential list. It's a plus. That means in the long project, at least um, the, 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 there'll be funding for it. Mm -hmm. yes. Even the health insurance scheme may also make provisions for it, meaning that if it's available, it should be used for those for who are, those under who the are down with it. So yes. for us, it's a plus. It wasn't there before. So you find out that the children that are malnourished, what is afforded for them are just things that will take care of their complications, acute complications like mm -hmm. infection,
like all those other things. Mm -hmm. But the meat of this matter, which is managing their malnutrition, is, is not provided. But now it's provided, so we are happy. Okay. Yeah, I just want to jump in that mm -hmm. recently the president launched the Basic Health Care Provision Fund. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, I mean, ready to use strategic food are not included. And that means eliminating 2.5 million children that are supposed to benefit mm -hmm. from this package. Yes. We need to make efforts to ensure, to that ensure that it is included in the basic health care provision fund, both at the state and at, at the state, I mean at the federal and, and at the, the state, state level, level, you know. And that means increased funding to ensure that this is covered. I think the, the common argument is that it's too expensive, but is it more expensive than losing 2.5 million children? Hmm. What of areas where we know now are hard hit? And children, yeah. yes, and our children are dying. In the northern region, they have been taken care of, and that is why we have all these sites that have been ongoing. Fourteen states are there: Adamawa, Bauchi, uh, Borono, Jigawa, Gombe, Kaduna, Kasina. But, yeah. Okay, you recently yeah. just came back. Yes, yes. 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 Just, just to mention that yes, the sites are yes. there, but they are a drop in the ocean. Yes, I'll give an example. I'll okay, give no an ocean. example in Jigawa. Yes where they, are, they have seaman sites in only seven local governments. They yes. need it in the 27 local government. Mm -hmm. So that shows so, that so, the so demand are, is much more than, more than what, what, is, what, what, yes. what, what we have now. Because be every deck. day you have mothers, well, you know, you know with making children and um, yes. more and more children are born. We so we agree. need, yes. Yeah, uh, well, we are in an electioneering campaign uh -huh. mode. That's and um, we maybe we'll done. use this uh, forum to, to speak to our politicians. Yes. What, 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 uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? This thing is important? Yes, I think uh, in simple, ordinary, poor man's language, hunger. Is the key, is the key. <laughs> and politicians shouldn't forget hunger. And hunger for the child that has no power to look for ways of feeding himself or herself is important. That's where the politician must make sure that for us to generate, I mean, to produce and I mean, children that are, are you know mentally alert, mm. physically strong, to actually contribute to economy, we need to focus on things that we address the hunger for children just as well as uh, mm. the adults. Okay. Additionally, yes. health is life. Mm. There is need for our incoming politicians to help us and make resources available. Especially and timely, for the children. Especially and timely and for the, the children. children. Yes. And release it appropriately for the people. For and should be robust. Yeah, should be robust. Yeah. I think I agree with that. Yes. For me, I, I, I want to actually say that the program should actually be holistic. There are existing one that we didn't mention, like the homegrown um, feeding program for children. I, I, I was going to come yes. to that. Yeah. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I, for me, I think we want to see promises like that. We want to see innovations. We want to see ideas, you know, popping up, telling us that, look, we are going to look more into different age groups because that is for school children. Mm -hmm. But we find out that the burden is more for those who are yet to start school, mm -hmm. the under fives. So we should have intervention that will reach out to those ones that are at home. Ultimately, mm. what do we need at least to, uh, to, you know, to upscale what we have now? What is, what is needed in terms of, well, we're looking at prevention, we're looking at uh, the, the, the ready-to-use uh, 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 food that, yeah, that comes in uh, is still imported. Yeah. So uh, no, what, 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 are we looking at manufacturing in Nigeria as a sustainable effort, as a permanent bridge, actually? Okay. Gosh, yeah. sure. Things are on several years. A lot of uh, private sector have been coming to make presentation how they will want to start producing. And presently, we have somewhere one that's a nutritional product that has started producing. Even though the raw materials still, Nigeria needs to get there because of the aflatoxin issues. And that is why we say the incoming politicians can help us so that we can have standard factories, uh, laboratory that can and make And farms. Up. Yes, that can take care of the quality so that it can now be manufactured. We will stop importing the raw materials. From yes, I would want to go to the other area that address the infant and young child feeding. If you find out the indices we have for children who are excreting breastfed are actually very low, yes. like 20 something percent. So if we can scale up interventions that focuses on nutrition, you know, things like increasing our breastfeeding rates, things like, you know, providing more education to women during the antenatal period, you know, those will go a long way also 
to help. It shouldn't be politicized. It should be something that have come to stay. I like that. Don't it don't should Sunday. not be politicized. Yeah. Yeah. Health should not stay. be politicized, but yes. it's an essential. Yes. Yes. Don't talk yes. right. And, and, and these things have been put in place in our national police. And this, you know, it's mm. scaling up I know. with resources mm. made available. Mm. That's so, sometimes I, I get worried just, scaling yeah. up yes, on essential. Good. Because the child or the children are essential for the growth and development of any society. Because we none of us has an eternal life so to speak yeah. Yeah. and and we degenerate as we yeah. grow old so we need the children yes. but we need a healthy herd of children that yeah. are not malnourished or stunted also nutrition should be taken as a vertical program mm -hmm. it should be integrated into the for example in the health sector it should be integrated into a total health sector plans and budgets right from the federal ministry of health to the states and to the local governments and all that so that it's not seen as a standalone thing part of the problem that is seen is neglected. They are seen as oh, nutrition is a different. It's part of the health system, and so integrating into state plans, state budgets, and all that's one thing. So that when you are talking about pneumonia or malaria, you're you talking about nutrition. You're also talking about nutrition. Um, bef just one final word from <laughs> one of us as we share our passion on this. I, I, um, I mean, do you, I would want a final word from you that puts paid to the fact that do we as a country? Uh, do or what we need to do as an urgency in long uh, in short term and and a long term planning of ensuring nutrition integrated in our health policies. Yeah. Well, for me, on the short term, we need to do something drastic to reduce the rising prevalence, particularly of the acute severe acute malnutrition. Mm -hmm. For the long term, because the long term are looking at the effect like chronic stunting, it, it has to be all hands on deck. What I mean by all hands on deck, you know, when you hear they declare a state of emergency in one sector, hunger is one area that a state of emergency is highly needed. So what's your Together, take? Together, everyone achieve maximally. Okay. We all, and especially our incoming politicians, please, nutrition is key to preventive, curative, and the long term. Preventive, Thank curative, you. yes. And just to add that when you are eating, Remember that there are thousands, millions of children there that don't have food, even the basic one. So keeping that in mind, ensuring that their attention, their focus is also, you know, uh, included in plans will be quite key. Yeah, and ensuring that uh, funds are released, budget line yeah. are released on time to ensure yeah. that the things that are needed for the children that are, you know, severely and acutely malnourished can get the treatment they need at the right time. Now, when these treatment do occur, do they recover, the children? Yes, they recover. Mm. You know, the, the fantastic thing about it is that when they come, you see them, they look very apathetic. During the stage of recovery, you now see the wonderful smile the children give to you. You know, malnutrition is something that can be treated. The, the joy is, is seeing a malnourished child, you know, coming up, healthy and being possibly, you know, also going to contest election at a point and winning <laughs> power. Oh, I love that. Contest growing up, full potentials, contesting election at some time and, uh, I mean, delivering to us the joy of a nation when you have the future of the nation giving ultimate priority. And that's what we're trying to uh, build today on this program, yes. ensuring that child health is important mm -hmm. and most importantly, nutrition is taken care of budget is released on time so mm. that the things that are needed to ensure that these children will grow to their full potentials is taken care of mm. i'm afraid that's all time will permit today i'm sure at some point i hope we can come back and uh, rejoice that the budget lines are moving so fast time. particularly for <laughs> our children and indeed our mothers uh, until then, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, let's get your feedback and um, hoping that state governments that need to release their own counterpart funding do so on time to ensure that there is no stock out for children who are needing some uh, measure of ready-to-use intervention. We thank you for watching. We'll be back again same time next week. Thanks for watching.